Good evening, everyone. Call this meeting to order. Thank you, uh, Member Jacobs. Uh, who had a stand for pledge of allegiance? Okay. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Would you kindly call the roll? Arnold? Here. Here. Fishburn? Here. Lappin? Here. Eden? Here. Reynolds? Here. Tata? Here. Tessa? Here. Maroon? Here. All has to make. Uh, I'm, I'll accept the motion on the consent agenda. Mr. Chairman, I move that we accept or approve the consent agenda items 3A through 3K, including 3L removal and consent. Any discussion on the motion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. Motion is unanimous. On to item four. Items removed from the consent agenda. Uh, so that will be item 3L. Uh, bid waiver. This is the Board of Ed. Uh, Madam Superintendent, you'd like to step forward. Do I have a motion on the second? Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve a bid waiver for power and mechanical. Second. Okay, I'm looking. Motion to make a second. Uh, Councilor Lee, you see your item. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, of course, we need to move forward with the temporary rental spoilers if we do not have the in the school. The issue that I have is I want to explore a little bit more. The scheduled delivery of the new boilers has been delayed due to circumstances beyond our control, thus forcing us to allocate an additional $94,000. Can you help us, uh, help me understand how we got there? To the price of the well, No, uh, the, the price is what it is. I right. Think, I think, uh, uh, Something better, just as far as how is this been delayed and why? Sure. So, so my apologies. If you could just uh, introduce yourself to the record. Daniel Bozzi, Superintendent of Schools. Thank you. You're welcome. We're on the San Diego School Market to a supervisor of the grounds. Thank you. Pardon the interruption. That's okay. So, this is give a little bit of history. Originally, we thought um, going back, we thought we would be able to um, replace these boilers next summer. And if you recall, in August, we had come and um, they were up for bonding. So we have two current boilers um, at Lyman Hall High School right now, um, but they do not work. This summer, that was not something they, they tried to fix them, they didn't work. And so we came over the summer and um, that was approved for bonding. So we had to wait for 30 days. So when we issued the purchase order in the middle of September, we were aware that there would potentially be a delay getting. So we currently have two at Lennon Hall, we're replacing them with three. Um, two of them are um, available, we believe, but we don't have them yet. The third one has to be built. And so, um, depending on how the weather will go and the time frame for the boilers to be delivered and then installed, we were asking for a bid waiver to rent a boiler for Lennon Hall High School for three months. So how do we know that three months is sufficient enough time? Well, uh, currently the two boilers that Daniel spoke of uh, are in stock in Connecticut. They've been delivered to the uh, river and they're ready to be shipped to our site. So uh, we don't expect uh, this to take more than maybe a couple of months. The uh, minimum that we can rent the boiler for is for three months or else we're probably going to cut it back to two. Uh, the vendor that won uh, Lyman Hall and the boilers at Pond Hill has been doing a phenomenal job and has been cooperating with us. And uh, just, uh, I can't tell you how good they are. They're self for contracting. Um, the uh, boilers at Pond Hill have been installed and they're piping them tonight. And uh, they're just doing an amazing job. We could have one of the new boilers online and we're in Lyman Hall in the near future, but we it will not be able to rent the boiler. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councilor Ted. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. Um, did the board then vote for this for the waiver request? So no, the board, the board of education does not vote for that. Okay, so that's another that they needed to approve. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the money for this, this is coming out of the board then funds or it's town funds because it's a capital item. I think we would entertain the motion if you want to fund it, but our plan was to fund it with some, you know, through maybe two percent or some other account in our operating budget. Okay, so that will have to go back when we go back to our operations meeting and our full board meeting. We'll discuss exactly where, uh, but it will come out of our budget or our percent. Okay, most likely. Great. And then just the reason for the bid waiver is it access to the boilers and the timing of the kind of work this company with the reason? It's timing of it. And so um, when Mr. Gatula was looking at this, uh, as we were going out and getting quotes and getting prices, the prices kept going up, one. And two, then they were not available. So we could get a quote for it, but then in a couple of days later, they weren't available. And so the timing of it is kind of tight turnaround time as well. So if you had to go out to bid, you're going to run into a problem where you're not going to have the time. That's exactly. exactly. We really needed to keep up with ASAP to get in there to get some whole base. It's going to be difficult. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Council 11. I hope this isn't an obvious question, but I think this is the last obvious question. But as far as thought processes, we couldn't go to the company and say, like, 75K, can you speed this up? Or anything like that? Just to just get these boilers a little faster? I, I, versus yeah. like, I mean, I, it yeah. seems like we're, we're doing a lot of work, we spending are. a lot of money exactly. for something that's just going to miss the mark. Exactly. But no, I wish I could. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Councilor Brinkman. Uh, David, you know, um, I'm just dealing you know, with procedure. So, <coughs> the superintendent essentially is hired by the board that the superintendent in conjunction with the board of ed hires mm -hmm. staff, right? So I can understand that the board of ed doesn't know that you're here tonight. No, well, they do know I'm here. Okay, so yeah, they do know okay. I'm here. So, so they received a copy of the letter and all of this information as well. But they aren't required to vote on whether or not you come here. That's what you said before. Right? Correct, because it's an operational item. We will need to keep the building. I'm so, just trying to, yeah. you know, the hierarchy. Like, we're a little bit different here, right? In the sense, you know, to say, nothing really gets to us on the general government side without going through the mayor's office, right? right. So, you know, the buck stops there. But board of Ed's a little bit different because the hierarchy is sort of flipped. I mean, the board of it, I guess, is at the top, mm -hmm. and then if you were the family tree, it, everybody's below. So, you know, if we take it, take the same analysis to the general government, you know, we always look for the mayor to sign off on something. Why wouldn't we, and maybe it's perceiving on the chairman of the Board of Ed sign off on something like this. I mean, what, what's to stop administratively you from coming here without them knowing or their sign off? Right, so I wouldn't be coming here without them knowing about it. So this was something we need because it's an operational thing. So if it was something that I didn't need a big waiver for, we would go out to it. Uh, and follow the normal process. The timeline to do the normal process, we, we weren't available to be able to do that because we're running tight on time with the need for the heat. Yeah. So that's why. No, I, I that's got all why that. this changed. I got all right. That. So I made them a, right. So I have made them aware of that this is what we needed to do. And I have spoken with the board chair about it all along that we had concerns about the boilers coming in on time. So on the general side of the government, sometimes the chair will contact us and say, listen, this is an emergency, we're going to do it, we're going to put it on our next agenda to make sure that it's okay, is everybody okay with that, right? But I'm hearing that the Board of Ed, through whatever power, doesn't do anything like that, right? There will be no record of the Board of Ed ever approving 
at that level, this is the kingdom of this land. Right. Okay, I just, yeah. it, it just seems a little weird, you know. Yes. I would just say, we've come here before because they wear them, and, you know, we have gone to the board. They will approve the funding for this. So, right, we're done uh, on our next operation meeting. We'll talk about, you know, we're going to fund it for these accounts, but I don't think we had a point to for the committee. Yeah, no, I, I know, you know, Council Lappin did ask about, you know, the contact, you know, those. Those are discussions that I would think the Board of Ed would be having with their employees, right? Essentially, if you look at the hierarchy, you both all work for the Board of Ed. Um, so, I, I just, I'm not aware of any portion of the charter or statute that precludes. Um, so, other than that, I just, you know, it's a learning experience, and uh, you know, maybe the Board of Ed itself will. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion on the the public? I'll have a second to kind of call the roll. Allison? Yes. Harvey? Yes. Big Fine? Yes. Lacker? Yes. Keegan? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Todd? Yes. That's it? Yes. Right. Yes. And motion to unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And we have the public question and answer period. Does anyone from the public have a question for the board? Not for the board. For the town council? All right. Seeing none, uh, just a quick announcement uh, that early voting is going to start October 21 through November 3rd. We'll be in this room in the town council chamber from 10 to 6 except on October 29th and 31st, where it will run from 8 to 8. Uh, other than that, you know, election day is on November 5th. Uh, you'll go to your normal location. If you have questions about early voting or about uh, uh, your polling place, contact the one registrar voters. Uh, seeing no questions from the public, we'll move on to item number six. Uh, Mr. Farrell, do you have an update on the Hinsburg Lane situation? I'm sorry, Mr. Brown, let me just um, wrap you up. Corporation Council Small has advised the <clears throat> that the developer has proposed a solution to one of the issues involved, and it's under consideration. And that she will also be speaking with the developer and attorney this week. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on to item seven. Mr. Chairman, uh, I'm sorry, I don't think you were going to this. No, this is going to cause the action regarding the collective bargaining agreement between the town of Wallingford and the Assamine Council 4, Local 1750, uh, the Good evening, gentlemen. Please introduce yourself on the record. Chief of the Council, Chief of the Governor, Anthony DeMail, Deputy Chief, Chief of the County Church Director. Good evening. And um, Mr. Howard, would you like to start off? Yes. Uh, we are here tonight to seek the council's approval for the successor contract for local 1570 and uh, Some of the substantive issues pertaining to the changes are uh, increases two days of annual sick leave from uh, three to five days and provides that sick time is available for members to use. Once that time is approved, it increases the sick leave incentive payment from $600 to $1,000 Effective 125, it has one compensatory day if no sick time is used during the entire food cycle. Some of the health insurance changes are to the PPO plan, it adds a $70 copay for specialists, specialist, increase from $500 to $1,000 for hospital admission, an increase of $125 to $250 for an emergency room visit. Uh, health insurance premium cost years increase from 17 to 19 percent over the life of the contract, and uh, increase in prescription drug uh, copay effective 125 from 1035 to 104060. And the effective June 1, 2025 uh, provides for dental coverage for dependents of uh, union members. Effective January 1, 2005. Change implements a shift schedule of 5253 for the patrol division. Uh, officers assigned to special service units 
school will be made on the five through schedule and will receive an additional 15 days of compensatory time. Wages, uh, effective and retroactive through July 124, general wage increases of 2% each year. And uh, in addition, we provide for a wage adjustment of dollar per hour for all ranks, with the exception of police officers on uh, step one. Uh, we'll receive a wage adjustment of dollar per hour for each year of the contract. There's amendments to the following language and uh, pay for extra duty assignments. Uh, holidays, the effect of 725 it permits employees and special services units to work certain holidays. Uh, it amends vacation days for new hires who are Connecticut post certified officers. Adds $1,000 for clothing for employees assigned to task force at the state, local, and federal level. An increase in college incentives uh, and uh, uh, from from 18,000 to 20,000 for all bargaining unit members, and increases of uh, uh, 250 for bachelor's degree, and that's a thousand dollars for the master's degree. And it's a three year duration, July 2024, so the third year is not 2027. Is that an answer? Uh, question. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, for questions, we'll start with uh, uh, Vice Chair Dan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just wanted to thank you all for being here. For those at home who can't see, we have a room full of police officers. And I, I said before, I never felt safer at a council meeting. So uh, <laughs> thank you all for coming. Um, and so I also heard that this was a very amicable negotiation process. So uh, we're definitely happy for that. And it sounds like the schedule change is a, is a big positive. So I um, just want to say thank you for all that you do for us every day. And uh, but this is hopefully going to go through next week. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Chief, Deputy Chief, I just want to thank you. You know, we had a fantastic weekend to celebrate law enforcement. Your officers were, were there, you know, people getting to know our officers in town and seeing them with smiling faces is always, you know, bringing the community together. And, uh, it's been a unique experience, but I just want to thank you for, for that. Um, you know, there's a couple areas of this contract I'd like to talk about. I'm on page seven, section three, trying to figure out, does the department agree to recognize the union representative, right, limited to three duly appointed by the union for the purposes of adjusting grievances and other union business? So practically speaking, is that president, vice president, and secretary, or is that just any member of the union? Because I don't see a distinction under the contract language. Uh, how is that being worked? So typically, that is what it is. But uh, um, you know, the treasurer can sit and adjudicate grievances or sit on that interview also. If uh, union president uh, delegates or he's not available, union president is here right now. Um, and the vice president, uh, historically, that's how it's always been handled. Okay, so when we look at the next sentence, so the, the, the president, vice president, treasurer, secretary, in by rank and file, so the, or the members of the dues paying members select these individuals to represent. Correct. But then if we look at the next sentence, it says the local president or any of the other two union representatives, and now we've just taken it away from three, we're automatically saying the union president is one of these people, selected by the local president, not by rank and file. So Based upon the actual language of the contract, the president, it appears, has a unilateral ability to select someone else. Am I reading something wrong there? It doesn't identify the vice president, treasurer, secretary. Takes that power of rank and file away. Well, I can say that that specific section deals with uh, arbitration hearings, so it's different than, I think, adjusting the grievance. I mean, I've sat as a vice president for over a decade, and I mean, anytime we get an arbitration hearing, it's usually with either the president, the vice president, or the president, the secretary, or some sort of combination of that. Um, yeah, I just, I'm looking at the actual language. For us, I know you know sometimes things happen. 
not in the contract, but it appears based upon his language that the president has the ability to unilaterally decide to fund some of the arts now. We look at the next sentence. The work that the individual is doing on behalf of the media that is being compensated for has to occur during their scheduled hours. With which I've never seen that language before. You know, usually it says um, we get paid to do union work. Um, basically, that's it, right? But this is requiring that the attendance, the attendance at a hearing, has to occur during his or her scheduled working hours. So my question for you is, since we're sort of shoehorning that in, has that been an issue? No. Okay. The notice about utilization, taking time off uh, for union work, if we look in section four of the second paragraph, it says there's 24 hours notice required if it's going to happen Tuesday through Friday. 72 hours notice if it's going to happen on Monday. What's the notice for Saturday or Sunday? Because if the union president, vice president, or treasurer are working with the co-chair and we go to uh, such hearing that would require us to fill the position, then we need advance notice in order to do so. No, I understand. And that is what's contemplated by the notice for Tuesday through Friday. The notice for Monday. But there is no notice for Saturday or Sunday. And I think this is more than just hearings, right? Or this is taking off any time for union business. Right. It's complicated, right? Right. So let's just say the union business is to occur on a Saturday. Under the contract language, what is the uh, time period for notice? There is none. Right? I can't speak to that. It's never come up before. So I know. I'm looking at the contract and presenting the contract. Okay, let's go on. Um, page 37. And I think this is you know, something I thought of. The fire contract is the ability of rank and file member to initiate a grievance. Okay, and that, that's sort of where we're focused here. Step one, which is a complaint to the head of the department under this language can be initiated by the employee. Well, actually, it requires it to be initiated by the employee. It doesn't permit the union. It says the agreed employee with or without his union, right? So it require the employee without the union, but it can't be the union without the employee, right? Can initiate step one, goes to the head of the department. Okay, benefit of that process. Step number two, which is a complaint to the human resources officer, once again, um, well, this is a little bit different because this says the employee and or his union representative can, can initiate that, right? So that one, the union can initiate on behalf of, let's say, a group of employees without all the employees being there. Right? That's, that's what it says. So let's just say that you're unsuccessful at step two. Who can bring it to arbitration? I would say that either the employee or the union can bring it to arbitration. Okay. But the problem with step three of this contract is it says either party. So when you have step one, so let's say it's the union and the employee to get together. And the other side, right? Union and employee, municipality on the other side, right? Those are the parties. When you get to step three, it says either party, right? right. So that means the employee perhaps loses that right at step three. Well, the employee, don't forget, you write the union now and hire its own private counsel and take that arbitration. So 
Well, this contract doesn't doesn't say that. But it Our courts have not gone that far. Um, but I mean, I will recognize that the fire contract out with the employee at any right. Everything has to be negotiated. But it's, it appears that contractually you're, you're cutting off rank and file and being able to break that at step three. The arbitration is based upon what I'm reading. So, you know, a lot of times these contracts aren't looked at by rank and file, you know, as far as the nuances. Um, but I just want to bring those issues to your, your attention. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Tesman. No, thank you. All right, now to Councillor Lassen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I also want to thank all the police officers, but I wanted to do it uh, in a similar way that we did for the Wyoming Department when they were here uh, a couple months ago. So I would like to move that uh, we approve the collective bargaining agreement between the town of Wallingford and AFS CME Council 4, Local 1570. And I just think that it's important to show the support, um, to thank them, but also show the support that the town is together with the police officers. And uh, discussion on the side of the Chancellor, uh, thank you, it was once again for that. Um, no, this contract was again, approved by the union. 65 to 0. I'm sorry? 65 to 0. 65 to 0. So that's rather overwhelming. Um, aside from this, I noticed you mentioned and in this, there is, at some point, um, dental coverage for family members. And I only ask that because I haven't seen that. Is that something that's starting to, would we would start seeing in other contracts? Is it becoming more and more of a, of a, uh, of a, of a negotiating point? How many unions have this? Council, this will be the third union in the last six months. Okay. That we provided dental Okay, so this is relatively new. Yes. So it is an issue and it's, it's become and the town is negotiating it in and I'm glad to see it. And, you know. Uh, thank you. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I just I wanted to say I was I'm pleased to hear that this was a very respectful uh, contract negotiation, and I too just want to thank all the officers for their professionalism and all that they do for the safety of our community. Um, every time I interact with one of your officers, uh, they've been nothing but the utmost professional, and we are lucky to have uh, each and every one of them serving our community. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, any members of the public. Uh, we'll take a voice vote on this. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Uh, motion is unanimous. Uh, thank you very much, Chief, and thank you very much to members of the department for your Thank you. Chief, you get a lot of applause. That's, that's impressive. <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere we go. Thank you. Yeah, we'll <laughs> sure. 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 Okay. All right, on to item uh, eight. Uh, discussion. I'll entertain a motion on the eight, please. Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the agent waiver for Amazon Enterprises. Second. Okay, motion is made and seconded. Uh, so, I'll remind the council, we, we, I believe we have already approved the funding for this item. This is just for the bid waiver. Correct. Chief, is there anything that you'd like to add about this item? Just, we're seeking a bid waiver um, because just like our buying cameras, um, proprietary software, Axon is Axon, right? So you cannot pay the Axon. Um, the Axon Assurance Plan is specific to that company. The training that they provide to certify our instructors is specific to the company. Evidence.com, which is used to upload the data from the taser, is specific to that company. So um, kind of a package deal. 
Uh, that's why we're seeking a bid waiver to go with them. Um, and obviously, there's no other person that can do what they do. There's no one that sells Taser or gives you the, the plan that uh, they're offering you. So that's why we're seeking a bid waiver for this person. Thank you. Uh, question from the council, starting with Council Reed. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just wanted to let the public know uh, there is no distribution system for Axon for government purposes. Uh, it's different commercially, you can put the DNA voter, you can put any number of different places, you can a commercial uh, consumer grade product, but this one is exclusively available by one vendor and one vendor only. So, thank you. Any other questions? Uh, there was a public any questions on the side? I'll uh, take a, a voice vote again on this one. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion is unanimous. Uh, what's the motion on uh, number nine? Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve an appropriation in the amount of $15,000 to revenue federal grant account into ARPA municipal radar signs. Second. Okay, any discussion on the motion? Yeah. Councilor Tessa. This might be the first thing I can, I've been up here a long time. This may be the first uh, vote on appropriation for the uh, police department and any, any public safety organization in town that I'm opposed to. And it has nothing to do with the uh, organization, the value that is placed on the, on the appropriation. It's uh, anything else let's just say on principle it's an objection to the source of funding. Uh, at some point or another, um, we have to say enough. We're spending our on just whatever pops up. That's what it seems like is happening now. We have some money to spend, it's like, what do, you, what do we got, what do we got? I would authorize this out of any other fund in, in general government. So I think these signs are fantastic. Please understand that I'm not opposed to them. But I'm opposed to the use of our funds for them because at some point we have to say stop. And there are three items on here from ARPA, one which I am in favor of, and two which I'm not, and this is one of them. So I just want to make it clear that it's nothing to do with the value of the of the of the item. I would uh, approve anything, take it from contingency, take it from anything. It's a fantastic use of funds, but it just sounds like one of those things where our notice went out. Who has a wish list? If you have some extra cash, let me know what you need. And that's where we're at right now, in my opinion. So that's why I'm opposed to this one. Thank you. Council Reply. So, Chief, what is the system actually used for? You know, other than me trying to get it to a triple bit uh, when I'm going down Main Street, um, I mean, does, it, does the signal go somewhere? Is there some monitoring, or is it just like, Personal knowledge that that is what you're doing. So, when you put this item and deploy it, um, it tracks 82 percentile speed, maximum minimum, minimum speed where you're at, and does traffic count and a couple other things. So, it uploads into the cloud. It's not a live monitor, so if you try to triple digit the machine, it's not like you can send a signal and we can go out there and catch you. Um, but it's more so, you know, for statistics. So, we get multiple complaints this evening. Different residential neighborhoods, and, and unfortunately, based on you know our call by putting a cop on the side of the road for a week and just running radar, it's just not practical anymore. So you deploy the sign to these areas. Um, you can review the data. You can put it out for a specific time frame: two weeks, one week. Look at what your traffic count is. Determine whether or not there's a speed issue at that specific location. If there is, you can either leave the uh, sign in, in use for a little bit longer, or we can. You know, a little bit more on speed enforcement, radar, and laser, or putting a speed trailer out there. Um, if there isn't a speed issue, we can move it because there's a lot of demand uh, for these signs. Right now, we have three signs that the state of Connecticut donated to us. Um, and I think that adding a couple more signs would help us. Um, but no, it's not a live monitor. There are systems that we're looking at right now to do live monitoring, um, but this is not one of them. So, like the one over um, across from where the mayor's office. One or whatever. That's been there for a while. Correct. Right? And logistically, I don't know that you could actually put, uh, other than standing officers there, the radar guns, 
and somebody chased me out of the car, I guess, you know, chase a car or something like that. Um, of what practical use is that that site then? Why not just move that? Well, we'll, we'll start with the first question. What practical use is that? So I said that's a school zone, and studies have shown that deploying the traffic logic signs have a reduction of speed by three to five miles per hour. That, that has been you know documented in different deployments and different research. So it does speed, you know, slow the speed down. I mean, there are people that if they're not, you know, it's not going to slow down, right? So you're not going to change your behaviors. But for the most part, most of the, the motorists that see that sign flash red, that you're over, I mean, it does cause you to slow down just a little bit. And, you know, studies show three to five miles an hour, which is better than not having anything to work there. So, you know, when I forgot what project it was, we talked about uh, enhancements in the roadway to, you know, once it's established in a particular area. I think we talked about it with uh, Howard yes. um, a couple years ago, right? So I, I guess that's something else that this, these reports could be used, you know, where you could identify an area that there's been, everybody's speeding, right. and you could put an accoutrement in the roadway like a speed bump to, to stop that. So where are you thinking of these two additional units. So I have to consult with our traffic division to see where their demand is. I know where some of the um, areas that I get directly sent to my office for, for issues, but there is a running list of where we can deploy them because we don't have the resources or the science to do it. So it's kind of a limitation. The one on North Main was kind of too terrible, like I said, because of the school zone. Um, there are different things that are out there right now. We've had some meetings uh, to try to address this you know, aggressive driving town um, that could be placed. Some of those signs in the school zone will look forward to some of the conversation for another day. But you know, for now, I think that those signs are strategically placed based on what we have as far as complaints come in um, will be beneficial. So I'm sort of you know, I'm listening to Councilor Testa, you know, his objection. You know, I'm not hearing that we have a place for these. There's a need to be addressed presently. It's like we're going to buy the infrastructure and we'll figure out afterwards. Whereas, you know, we've been up here pining about things that we'd like to spend our dollars on. And I'm just looking at the dynamics of the two. Do um, you want another shot at that? I mean, is there, is there is this a, is this a need that is is apparent and is necessary at this time. I mean, absolutely. For, for speeding, yes, absolutely. I mean, and there, there is areas that we can put them on. It's just, I would have to look at where we are. I mean, if there is a backlog of places that we can we have place a lot of now and we have signs that support people. The more complaints we get, the more signs we have, the more, the more areas we can address. And then we can learn and we're, we're going to direct our resources, our actual police officers. Roadside. Yeah, I know. I'm just looking at as Council Tesla was, you know, the funding source. So, you know, we had a budget that we dealt with in, in May, and this was not part of the budget. There was no, you know, so I have to assume that since the budget got booked that this need has come up during that period of time, otherwise there would have been a request in the budget for this. So, so full transparency, Councilor, I mean, we've you know, been approached to, for projects. Like, what do you, you, as a partner at the town need, you know, because there's funding, right? So we looked at a mobile demand trailer for the town. Right? So we don't have a mobile command center for the town to do a critical incident. So we looked at that, priced it out, um, you're looking at somewhere between three quarters of late time for a row of seven. That's not going to happen, right? So we would never even request that. Um, we looked at license plate readers for, for the town. And if that's you know, most of the towns surrounding us have some sort of contract with a company to and, you know, install license plate readers in the town. Um, stolen cars come in, you, you, know, you get flat cars. It's, it's a great tool for us to have, but it's also extremely expensive. Um, so what we did. To alleviate that cost, I did not even ask you was to kind of seek different manners to which we can achieve or attain those items without asking for money, which we're working on and kind of successful doing so so far. 
So we look at speed, right? So there is a, an issue in town, and we need to start addressing it a little more aggressively. But unfortunately, the call by in, in town and things that we have to uh, the patrol unit has to do occupy your time more so than we did in the past, where you can stick a car on the side of the road, run the radar for an hour or two, and, and you know write some tickets and, and try to make a difference. So saw the opportunity. Uh, I talked to the mayor about it. You know, he was on board with it, so I, I put it into the five uh, systems and. You know, is it something that the council wants? By all means, you know, we really appreciate it. If not, you know, we'll figure out how to do it. But personally, I want to give you the tools that you need. But you know, the mobile, mobile command system, um, Senator, what about the the one that's over at the EMS, the, the, um, the old um, Yellowstone Firehouse? They've got a trailer that is, they represent to me, at least, to be a mobile, you know, it's, it's hooked up to the radio and all that stuff or we've got a, a traumatic event and you know the mobile unit that they use. Right and over the past month um, we've been in works with joining the South Central Region uh, emergency response team. Um, we've been voted in preliminary to join that team. Um, we will come to you in the future to discuss that but part of that agreement you have access to a state of New York crisis center. So that's when I say we kind of found another way to deal with it. That's what I refer to. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Councilor Allison. I was just going to share the anecdote that when I pass those things, a lot of times I have no idea how fast I'm going, even though it's literally on my dashboard. Like, how often do we really look down? We're supposed to be looking at the road. So when I see something flashing at me that's like, you're going faster than the speed limit, I'm going to see my number. And I do tend to slow down. And I think that that's a really important thing, especially in an area like the center of the town where there are tons of walkers. So um, I will hardly support it. And I just, you know, I, I thought I'd be talking five minutes sooner, so it would be a better time. But yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, on this, the, I'll just address the art thing for a second. So my email is open to all comers that have suggestions. What well, would we like to study art on? Right? And I haven't gotten any suggestions as far as the items put on the agenda, but I would entertain all items. The mayor's open to that as well. So he, in the way that I think the mayor probably should, ask his department, what do you need? And so the police said that we'd like this piece of equipment. So you can object to the equipment, you can object to the expenditure, but the mayor's essentially doing what we as a council ask. Right? We ask for items to spend our work on. He provided the items. If you want to go in another direction, you're certainly entitled to it. I haven't received a single request, um, you know, paid for. Uh, an item that we'd like to spend the money on in terms of a, a tangible idea. We, we've had sort of high balloon ideas like we'd like to have you know, a park or whatever, but like if you have an actual idea, bring it forward and we can certainly have it entertain it. Um, so this discussion of, you know, this is the wrong thing to spend our money on, I mean, it's our money to begin with. So this is the, I think this is a great expenditure. Uh, speeding is obviously a problem in town. Uh, the police came forward with a recommendation. Uh, I'm all in support. So any other discussion on this item? Councillor Reynolds. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I guess we'll just respond to that. I, I have no problem. This is a good uh, thing to have in my town. I live on a road. I'd love to have one of these because people you know, go like 70 and I'm 35. Um, I, so I'm just confused. And again, uh, but so we talked about the need to spend the money. Then last evening we said, well, we really don't because we can just put it all towards the pool in some way or paying for this and putting it back. But now we're back to spending it. So I'm, that's that's my only trepidation. Like I know we asked for a list of projects, and you know I, I, at this point I'm not going to argue over fifteen thousand dollars. But I'm just I also don't think that I have the ability to propose an actual project, nor do I have the ability to put it out of bid, nor do I have the ability. So I can't email any. Suggestions for anything. I did mention that I would love to invest the money in something geared towards youth, but I, you know, I guess when I was a kid, I used to try to ride my bike past these things and see the little register how fast I was going. So maybe it's a tool for kids too. I don't know. But anyway, I just, you know, I, I just wanted to address that. Like, it, you know, the goalposts kind of move a little bit here. You know, maybe it's the wind, maybe it's, uh, you know, maybe it's fog. I don't know, but it seems like the goalposts move to me. So that's that's just my own. Thanks. I mean, 
I would disagree that the goalpost moves. I think last week was sort of made a correction that we, we didn't really anticipate. However, I think the pool was a project that started with the council. The council's been asking questions about the pool. So we pushed the pool and now we're putting it out to bid. So I think, you know, to say you don't have the ability uh, to suggest a project, I mean, the pool obviously has been something we've talked about for a very long time, right? But that's something that originated with the council. So, so don't think you don't have the authority, I guess. If you have a project, then let's talk about it. We'll see where you go, Councilor Bishop. I agree with Councilor Rowe. Uh, you know, we've been talking about skate park for almost like a decade. So I propose that we use our knowledge for skate park. Is that what you want to hear? I mean, let's let's do something because you know those kids that can't afford, don't have time, parents don't support extracurricular activities after school. A lot of them are getting in trouble. They don't have anything to do now. I mean, nobody can walk to Park and Rack. Park and Rack, you know, it should have been a Simpson Court and all that stuff, but you know, a kid that lives over on East Street can go play at West Side Field, perhaps. So they can't make use of all the stuff that there's Park and Rack. I mean, they get there. They got no bottle, nothing like that. So, I mean, we're spending on this agenda, we're spending 200. $220,000. I mean, the numbers that we've been looking at for skate park for a long time is like $300,000. So, you know, I don't know what we got to do, to, but I'm, I, I'm, I'm saying, we're at a council meeting, I'm saying, we'd like, some of us maybe, would like to have a skate park in our town. What do we got to do? Make a motion to make a committee? I mean, what do we got to do? What's no, that's 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 yeah, I mean, we'll put it on the next agenda. Uh, I mean, okay, so let, let's do it because, I mean, this money is going away, and I'm hearing we haven't talked, you know, we haven't gotten any plans. I mean, the whole list from uh, Concertata two years ago of, of, of all stuff. Skate Park was on the list. So I'm picking it, I'm pushing it, and I think we should be doing it. So thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion on this item? Members of the public? Madam Clerk, are you kind of call the roll? Allison? Yes. Carmody? Yes. Fishbein? Yes. Lavin? Yes. Reading? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Tessa? Yes. Mara? Yes. Thank you. This is a Motion is unanimous. Thank you, Council. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank Chairman, I move that we approve an appropriation in the amount of $149,444 to Revenue Federal Grants Account and to ARPA Municipal Tyler Upgrade. Second. Okay, Mr. Senator, this is your item. Good evening, everyone. So, this is to put our financial management system as cloud based. As part of the uh, technology report that the consultants uh, prepared, that was one of the recommendations. In that, this would eliminate the need to replace three servers that are at pretty close to the end of their useful life. Uh, some of the advantages of going to the cloud are that there will be the updates are automatic, patches, security, and we're always on the latest version, whereas now, the IT department looks at these tools and now we'll look at patches and, and security. Uh, disaster recovery is covered by the company where you know this building gets taken out. You should be back up and running as soon as possible. One of the main reasons to do this is the old administration kind of 
tighter our hands on how we use the system. So there's only Order Sooner Electric have access to it, Finance has access to it, and, and that's pretty much it. What we would like to be able to do is move, if we can move it to the cloud, we can open this up to other departments to eliminate some duplication of effort, such as if the fire department wants to do a purpose practice. They have to type in all the information in a different software, print out that requisition, it gets set to purchasing, comes to finance, and then they have to put that same exact information into units or high you know, they're, they're changeable to get the purchase order value. So this would allow us to open the system where buyer can go right in, right into the system, and for the rack that goes to purchasing, they can purchase it. Uh, this would also, you know, this would give people the ability to work from home as well. So those are my kind of points for this. All right. Uh, the council starting council meeting. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Sona. Uh, we've had the opportunity to talk about this in, in previous sessions. Uh, additional going to uh, the cloud release does bring us up to uh, current provisions on the platform, which we are unable to go on with the existing server software and storage and backup systems that are currently in place. Uh, there is an inherent risk, uh, I believe, that we have right now that was identified in the study um, for, for not keeping up to date uh, as far as uh, as far as server patterns are concerned and, and the whole and the entire infrastructure. Uh, there is also inherent security enhancements that are given by going to the cloud, which gives us auditing capabilities that we otherwise would not have on a, on a steady basis. Mr. Sarna can go in as well as IT staff and take a look at who's, a, who's accessing what data, what records, where, from, from where, when, etc. I don't know necessarily that we're moving to a culture of working from home from a financial standpoint, but the opportunity and the ability is there in the event that we do have hurricanes, storm, car outages, et cetera, uh, that our financials just can't be down for a period of time. Uh, and that includes, uh, you know, so we've got this disaster recovery uh, pieces and capabilities to be really from anywhere. Um, the use of a, and the processing of a lot of financial data, both payable and, and everything else is going forward. Plus, it gives us one more step forward Thank you, Mr. Yes. Chair. Um, so, I want to understand this correctly. So, the so this is a component of the technology upgrade plan that you're all you're referring to as well, right? So, this 149,000 is baked into the year. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, and I'm understanding there's efficiencies being created here. We're you're going to be up to speed. We're actually going to be using what we pay for, and it'll be utilized across other departments that don't currently have access to this. Is this correct? Correct. Yes. Okay. And this would, if we ever had a reason to all go home and work from home, this would allow somebody to input this information from somewhere other than here. Correct. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Moving on, Councilor Thank you, Chairman. You know, I'm not. Technology upgrade here, and I know this is what it is. But I want to ask about the work from home. I mean, I, I was just using that example of you know when, when the mayor, the former mayor, closed thing with close town hall, and he didn't have it. So work from home would probably be for me when I'm working on the budget on the weekend, and I don't drive a half an hour here. I can, I can do stuff at home. Yeah, no, I got there. You want to? Please and thank you. Um, so, since COVID, we, we know we need some kind of resilient, resilience plan to continue to operate in the event that, for whatever reason, you can't get this building, whether it's a disease or it's a catastrophic, catastrophic event in the building. 
Um, so the plan is to have department heads able to work to operate their departments from home in the event that some of that occurs that prevents us from getting to town hall. Well, I appreciate that. And my question has to do with some uh, procedure. I would expect that there's going to be some sort of appropriation or request to give department heads laptops or something. How do they have them now? So the prior request, um, I think it was the last, well, there have been several expenditures approved from a variety of sources uh, that will include laptops uh, for department heads. So they've already, um, they've already, I believe they've already been approved. You know, and I think one of the last buckets that was approved for technology included that purchase or contemplated those purchases. So, and I'm not, I'm not requesting this, I'm not desiring it. Uh, but it has been talked about in the past. Is it contemplated that members of the council will have a dedicated laptop? Because I know, like with the state, I have a laptop that they represent. I never use it. So why do you want to know? I'm not. Once again, I'm not requesting. I'm not suggesting. I'm inquiring whether or not you know because like we don't have an email. Like we talked about having an email address that's dedicated, right? And we, we don't have that. And I'm sure it's coming at some point. So I'm just trying to ask a question about what the future brings. I'm not going to push. I mean, is that contemplated? Is that? I mean, it can be. You know, the the council is budgeted as its own department, and if the department head wants to make such a request, we can look into that. But that, I mean, that from an administrative perspective, um, it's not something that that we are necessarily looking at. But if, if the department uh, can justify it, you know, we're certainly going to have a conversation. Okay, that's all I have. More conversation all the information. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, we have a council chat. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'd be happy with just a council email address. I don't need a laptop. So just for the record, <laughs> Chief Reed did not think about my Yahoo email address for the council work. Um, hopefully that's coming. My question is, um, and Mr. Mayor, I think you may have touched on this. I believe we um, we approved approximately seven hundred thousand um, dollars maybe a month or so ago for um, technology. I think the new head of IT had asked for things. Was this is in addition to that? I understand, it, correct? This is separate from that. Okay, and was, that was more for hardware, and, okay. and this is a software purchase then. Correct. Okay, and then is this an ongoing? Subscription or this is a one-time cost. So this is the one-time cost to, to go out there, get it running, and then we have annual maintenance. So the annual maintenance cost would be a little higher, but um, you know we did it we did do a cost benefit with the um, consultant, and it pretty much within by year three or four we kind of break even without having not having. A, Keep purchasing servers and stuff, and training staff to kind of update the stuff. Great, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I think that I just, I'm sure you all have a question. So, if these three ARPA things are approved today, it leaves about five hundred forty-five thousand unallocated, and that number is sure to grow as these projects are winding down and anything that had too much funding then gets turned back. I'm sure that's all in the back of your mind, so I figured I'd get that out there. Thank you. Um, Councilor Allison. Personally, I would also love a, a council email. Uh, so, uh, I think before we ever headed towards laptops for the council, though, I'd love power too, so that we can power what we have. Um, but as an aside, uh, will this eventually, like, so as we replace, uh, this is, I think it's off topic personally, but, um, as we replace uh, hardware, will this also enable you to provide laptops for everybody so they can get off of like workstation type of computers? Or like as it's being, as replacements come up, not necessarily replacing everything that's all at once. I mean, I think that's a, uh, I can speak to that. I, I think the goal right now is. To get the department heads 
with a laptop. I mean, some of my staff does not need a laptop to process bills. You know, the tax office, they don't really need laptops to, to do what they're doing. So I don't know if the goal of management is for everyone to have a laptop, but I think you know, if there's a, a, a need for it, I'm sure that's a route that we can go, but I think that's more the IT director's fault than, than mine. For sure, I get that. Um, I just am cognizant of if we know we're really resiliency, resiliency planning. Um, I imagine the department heads don't want to do the entire job um, for everybody, so it's definitely something to consider for the future. But for now, I think this is a great item, and I'm happy to support it. And just because it's come up a few times, so the mayor and I have had several conversations about council email, uh, about potentially other ways to get packets, like not necessarily by email, by or other sort of things. So things that are being sort of looked into in addition to Wi-Fi for the chamber and so on and so forth. So I think a lot of changes are coming. It's just been uh, it's rolled out a little slower, uh, I think, than I had anticipated. But you know, obviously, a lot of this back end is a lot more than I anticipated as well. So, Councilor Reed probably knows more about it than I do. Um, any other questions on this item? Questions from the public? Madam Clerk, we kind of call roll. Allison? Yes. 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 Martin? Yes. Adrian? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Tara? Yes. Tessa? No. Murano? I don't know. Yes. Motion passes. On to item 11. Uh, I'll make a motion to uh, approve an appropriation around 61,000 uh, revenue federal grant uh, to ARPA Municipal Pregnant Park. Second. Our motion is made and seconded. Um, Mayor, your hand on this. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Michaels is not available tonight, so the council may recall that it previously approved up to thousand dollars for uh, the improvements to this basketball court. It went out to bid, um, and it came back sixty-one thousand dollars, higher than anticipated. Um, and the thought was to come back to the council for the same source of funding, for the same project. Um, so, and I believe, I, I can't remember which project, uh, which is, and I don't know if you do, but there was um, a recreation department project where the council had approved ARPA funding, and um, it was not fully realized because the project cost less. So there's a little bit of lots of money left over from another recreation department project. There's, a, there's about 12,000 of money from Parks and Rec left from two wheel cameras and the, the van that's getting turned back over. All right, uh, questions on this item? Uh, Starting with Councilor Tess. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The basketball court in Doolittle Park that we've been hearing about some issues with. Is this the same vendor? Holds me the same vendor, but it's not the final. It, it's gone out to bid. I think the same vendor was awarded the bid. They um, so the the court that's on, I believe, it's Wall Street. Um, that court was completely straight, scraped, and repainted, and uh, it's fine. They stood behind the project. Okay, so that's all. That's all fine. This makes perfect. Absolutely. Okay, perfect. I, I personally examined yeah. those. Towards because they receive so much attention, and uh, I think they they look impressive. Good, that's good to hear. Thank you. Um, the flooding issue at Cranmer Park is that I, I hear anecdotally about it a lot. Is that an ongoing issue? Is that just is there a park there because it's an area that floods, and we, that's just what it is? I, I'm I'm not really sure. I, I always hear that you know part of flooding there's issues and uh, I'm not, I just don't really know what the situation is. You know, I, I don't know. I do know we've had two years of historic rain. I know there are parts of the park that are wet. Um, I, I don't, I can't be certain, but I don't think this is one of them. Okay. Yeah, because that would obviously be a concern if you know, that would affect it. Um, but uh, the other question I have, 
Is there, I heard there is an endowment at Penn State University that has money sitting in it. I don't know if Mr. Senator knew about that. I, I heard about it recently. I hadn't known about it. Um, is, is there an endowment? Is there money sitting in there? And do you have any info on that? There is a trust fund or a creative park that's currently in the June 30th, as of June 30th, sorry, September 30th, there's about $164,000 there. Okay, that's fun. That was a, a gift from somebody initially? Yes. And what are the acceptable uses for that money? So it has to be spent on the park place. I think we've done fencing and stuff, but I, I would have to go back to the, to the agreement. But it, you know, it has to be used for creating the park. So there is a, a facility there, like a snack bar or something with storage. Um, and I believe that, which I've been told, needs significant improvement. And um, I think that is a potential use for those funds. Okay, so you, you kind of have that earmarked for that program for the use of that and development for trust. It's contemplated, yes. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I like the use of our memorial parks. I said that since the beginning. Um, I just, this one, I mean, sort of the same old thing. I think $161,000 for a basketball court, court seems uh, like a lot of money, especially when we have a trust fund sitting there with some money in it. So, um, uh, I'm a little iffy on this one, so I decided I would know. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you for the council. My question was also regarding whether it's the same vendor, and um, do we know how much we spent on the, the little basketball courts? I, I do not have that. I can get, get that to yeah, I can also ask Mr. Michaels, and I, I can hear this later now. Um, I'm, you know, my concern is that presumably the vendor came back to essentially service the lines on, that were bubbling out of warranty, and I'm just wondering what the comparative spend is between the two. Uh, like, are we actually funding our own relining of the basketball court? Uh, not to say that that's not to make any accusations. I mean, it's just a little suspicious to me. So um, I think I'd like a little more information. Um, so uh, I'll leave there. Thank you. I, I can't say that it was a, a big, it was a big prospect. So it, you know, I, it had to be awarded to the lowest qualified bidder. You know, we're we're not going back to that to say. Thank you for standing up to the warranty team. You know, let's try again. It, it was subject to a competitive bid process. Councilor Lev, what was the second bid? Was it more than one hundred and sixty thousand dollars? Like they, so they won the bid at a hundred, and then they came back and said, "No, that is not sixty. It's a hundred. No, the hundred was it." Estimate from so we we just we thought it would be a hundred and then the lowest bid came in at one sixty. Yeah. Okay. From the vendor that did the doodle. Correct. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Can I just make one point too? One of the reasons why we're trying to use the same source of funding is for when people ask how much that cost if you don't have a hundred thousand dollars in this fund from sixty one thousand then that fund is increased and maybe that's just why that you know that's why it was chosen to stay in that same account. So you know the issue for me really is just I don't remember exactly the other court's cost, but I was substantially less, right? And so it just seems like an awful lot of money to spend on basketball court that I believe is is it concrete now or is basketball current? I'm not certain, but I believe it's asphalt. I don't know what the asphalt court would cost, but it would be substantially cheaper than 160 grand. I mean, I understand that this is sort of the trend is to the high tension concrete. It just seems like an awful lot of money to spend, you know, in that particular spot. My, my information is that um, you, you get three times the life 
and you get a 20 year warranty on the concrete, you get a 10 year warranty on the paint. Um, so that's why it seems desirable, whereas, you know, asphalt, you see what happens to our roads, you see what happens to other asphalt basketball courts. On the council of so I've never seen Parker Wright off that car on an estimate, especially since Doolittle, I think, got did a year before I went out. You know, so basketball court, generally the same size. I would think that they would have had decent numbers to do the estimate, but we're $61,000 off. So that, you know, and I, I agree, it just seems a little weird, but, you know, at the very point that the administration decided to use ARPA dollars for this particular project, you know, I've been up here, what, 15 years? I have never heard about an endowment for this park. Never. Um, you know, I think that our job is to determine where it can get paid for, unfair to say for not to disclose to us. And I don't know if this mayor, this part, the former mayor, unfair to not disclose to us. These are the places you can't get the money from. I think if I had known at the time when this was originally approved that there was $100,000 and then some in this fund, I don't think I would have approved it coming out of our fund to begin with. Um, so I don't think what's before us should come out of our fund. I think that the endowment that's there can absorb the $61,000. Never heard anybody from Park and Rec come to us about rehabbing the building there. Isn't in the budget, nothing like that. I think that's an appropriate thing. And we sort of generally talk tonight about possible projects for ARPA dollars. I'd like to park the 61000 with the anticipation of maybe doing something with a skate park or something. Um, this is where my head is at. So, I, I mean, and Mr. Senna, I know you work very hard and, and I appreciate everything you do, but I think it would be helpful for us if we got a list of all these endowments and trusts and all this stuff, because ultimately under the charter, that's our job. So, and then leave it to the administration, you know, you take direction from the administration, but, you know, I, I don't want to get to the point that every appropriation that we're reviewing up here, we have to, you know, well, is there another place we can get the money from? You know, are you sure about that? We should be working together again in glove for the betterment of the taxpayer, or the dollars are, are tax dollars. And they can be used for a wide array of things, whereas, this fund that I've heard about for the first time tonight is going to be used for a limited purpose. And I think that limited purpose will need the basketball court. And I think it should be used for that purpose. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Any further discussion on the site? Mr. Chairman, I'll come in. No, thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, honestly, only in the past several weeks have I become aware of the Franklin Park endowment. Um, there is no, there has been no overt action to apply the funds towards the uh, snack bar facility, storage facility, but that is in, in the course, you know, this is in the course of that conversation um, that, that I became aware of that. So, you know, none of that, that money's not going to be spent without coming to the council. It's not going to be done in any surreptitious fashion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your patience, Council Adam. No problem. So, I'm hesitant to go forward tonight um, with the two major concerns being what did the other core cost and <clears throat> why were we 60% off to come to this point, this by the point of I also want to ask that's a, that's a huge, I mean, so they built basketball courts and they were 60% off. Like, is it just simply we decided to completely change from one type of court to the other, and that will cost 60% more. I don't know, I just, I would feel better having maybe parking right here, or um, in finding out how much 
we spent on the Google port. Um, and did, did we spend 160? Did we, did we spend 200? I'm, you know, I'm just trying to understand. And, and maybe I'm just a little you know, gun shy on the basketball court thing because we've had so many issues with the other one and find out it's the same vendor. And maybe that's just completely fluke and that's a problem with the site and there's a, a little street that runs by there. There's just a different water table. It could be a lot of things, sure. Um, but I think an extra two weeks, for me anybody, anyway, with people here to answer some of our questions, I think we've all kind of thrown out that it would be better. So, I mean, I like the main portion that we table this discussion until the next meeting. Second. Actually, you know, I, I could, I'm happy to withdraw my initial motion, and I'll just, we can just take this to the next meeting. No. And we'll get second. Okay. All right, good. Um, anyone else care to make motion on this item? <coughs> Seeing no further business, this meeting is adjourned.